great. So uh, it's time for another use case and another real world application. Those of you who know me and who have seen me at conferences, they know that that's something I really like to show and talk about because uh, I very often run into people saying, okay, nobody's using JavaFX, everybody's doing web development, everybody's doing a JavaScript. And I'm like, no, that's just not true. It is being used all over the place, but it just doesn't have the same kind of exposure as web applications have. Because if you write an application like Facebook or Twitter, then obviously everybody can access it and they have millions of users. So our typical use case is behind company walls very often, okay? And this is one example. Um, this application is being developed by a company called Synap in the United Kingdom, and I'm part of the team. It's a startup. And we this is an application for the uh, energy market. So it's uh, energy as a service. And it's not just one application, but it's actually a whole, uh, plethora of applications, no, not that many, but it's it's uh, three applications and uh, I will show you what it's all about. So Senap, like I said, a startup in the energy market. So what's happening right now in the United Kingdom and probably also many other markets and other countries is that there's this a uh, revolution going on in the in the en energy market. A lot of alternative energy sources, uh, green energy, uh, but in the United Kingdom, uh, they also opened up the market. So everybody can now become uh, an energy supplier for electricity or gas. That does not mean that you actually have to produce electricity or gas, but you are a reseller, just like uh, you have a lot of different providers for mobile phone services, right? They don't all have their own antenna, but I mean, you can go to like in Germany to uh, to discounters like Aldi uh, and, and get a, a card for, for your phone, right? Uh, but they don't they don't provide the network in any way. So it's the same same there in, in, in the UK. And what's happening is at the same time, so not only did they open up the market, but they are now replacing all the old technology with new technology. And in this case, the old electricity meters with smart meters. So if you take a very close look at the picture of the smart meter, you will see that it says ethernet module. So these are internet enabled devices. So if you're now an electricity supplier in, in, in the UK, you want to be able to access these devices. And in the UK, they allow you to do that. And they provide um, a network called the DCC, which uh, bridges the gap between the, the energy supplier and the consumers at home. So via the DCC network, electricity slash energy suppliers can access the meters and they can uh, get the readings from the meters and they can tell you how much uh, energy you, you, you used, uh, where you used it, how you used it, when you used it, and they can automatically create a bill for your usage. But the problem is uh, this requires a lot of technology and a lot of software and most companies, they just don't have the skill set to come up with a solution like that. And there are software companies that provide solutions, but they are not up to date with the latest changes and not up to date to work in combination with smart meters or with this newly created DCC network to access the meters. So at Senap, uh, we have created a couple of front ends. So the first one you saw come up there, uh, upper left corner in orange, that's called MyWatts. This is a um, web application, no, not written in JavaFX and also not using JPro, uh, that gives access to uh, uh, the energy utilization of consumers. So any consumer can go in there if they have an account and they can see how much energy they uh, they use and for what. Then in the middle, we have uh, another online application called EVX Central, which is a service for owners of electric vehicles. This will allow you to utilize the electricity tariff that you have with your energy supplier, also for your car, no matter where you are, whether you're recharging your car at home, uh, at work, uh, somewhere on, uh, on, on some random street. Um, and and still you want to be able to utilize like the, the cheap tariff uh, for which you have a, uh, a contract with your energy supplier. 
For those people, obviously, you also need a mobile application, which you see on the right-hand side, uh, which is powered by Gluon. And this was written in JavaFX. And then we have a desktop application for the support agents at the, at the supplier's company. So those people that you talk to on the phone, or sometimes they call you to sell your contract. And uh, these guys, they will use this software to register a new contract for electricity or gas for you. And that desktop client obviously was written in JavaFX. But let's start with the, with the mobile application. Like I said, uh, it's called EVX Central. And this was written in JavaFX using Gluon technology. So let's, this is a video. I, uh, I did not dare to do <laughs> live presentations uh, for various reasons. So when you get into the application, you get this nice uh, intro screen and you can just swipe through there. You get full support for gestures. Then if you enter like a JavaFX text field, you get that native keyboard where you can enter your email address and your password. So you see it's nicely integrated into the underlying mobile uh, app, uh, platform. So in this case, iOS. I just go through a couple of these screens. It uh, doesn't really matter what exactly they mean. Obviously, if you have a, a contract for this EBX central service, you have some kind of card in your wallet and you can manage it with the application. So this is, this is not a mock-up. It might look like a mock-up, but this is actually a QuickTime recording of my iPhone, okay? So you can see all these animations in there. And also if you notice, or for example, in this case, I'm scrolling up and down with the scroll bar that Jose fixed a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, and then we are done with the application. So this was a real live video, live video. This was a video recording of the application, how it runs on my phone. And you could see that it looks completely like a native uh, mobile application, I think. Uh, I, at least I did not notice any problems there. All right, so if you follow me on Twitter, you will notice the, that I spam you frequently with screenshots that are very green usually. So that's our desktop application. And I just really like to always show off the latest stuff, not only to show off look, look, the cool stuff that Derek is working on, but really to showcase uh, how well you can use JavaFX for real world applications and business applications. Right? So that application is called the CIM desktop. Uh, I started working on it three years ago. It has over 100,000 lines of code all written by me because I'm the only guy working on the front end, unfortunately. And I ran some statistics or some, some yeah, statistics plugin in IntelliJ and I found out that it actually contains 14,000 lines of CSS code. Yep. So uh, I was really surprised about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe before you continue with the desktop, we have a, a lot of people who are curious about how you get a JVM running on your iPhone. Uh, well, you don't. <laughs> you, uh, you, you compile it to native via the Gluon tools, okay? And uh, the Gluon tools are built on top of GraalVM and GraalVM creates a native executable for different platforms. So JVMs are not allowed on mobile, on, on iOS. But it's a JavaFX application. Come again? It's, it's a JavaFX application. It is a JavaFX application, yeah. I thought I made it clear, but yeah, this is really a JavaFX application uh, compiled to native iOS, okay? Okay. All right. So this is our desktop application. And uh, again, if you follow me, you will know that I also work on quite a few open source projects and most of them or many of them are actually derived work from uh, the, the desktop. So there's, for example, the Workbench FX project, which was then uh, executed by students. Um, the idea was that I wanted them to come up with a workbench framework that then once it's even better than the code that I wrote, I could feed back into our desktop application, but that never really happened because then I continued work on the desktop. So uh, we just went different ways. But what I have now in our application is called Shell FX, and this, this will be like a commercial version of Workbench FX. So if anyone needs something like that, then please feel free to contact me. Then preferences FX, forms FX, gems FX, and PDF UFX. These are all open source projects that uh, were initially created as part of this project, and then I made it made the code available to the open source community. Okay, so this is the application now. Um, this is now the desktop application running directly, I mean, natively on on my Mac, and you can see there's this intro sequence. We have these login screens. 
we have views for changing and resetting the password, all of that. Then you get to a screen where you select different modules within this desktop application. The user now selected the customer management module and is searching for a user called Joseph Ben and then for Farouk Al Hassan, who is our CEO. <laughs> and inside the custom, once the customer tab opens, you can see you get information about the customer and you can see where the customer lives, the neighborhood. We have a nicely integrated uh, Google map uh, based on GMAPS FX, another one, another open source project. Um, and yeah, you can open the contracts and you can see the meter readings for the meter that is covered by the contract. You can see the bills that were generated for the customer. There's the PDF view, which you find in the PDF view FX project that I recently created. You can see, take a look at the debt management section. So you can see, does this person owe us money or do we owe him money? There's another module called product management and in product management we manage all kinds of products and one of them are electricity tariffs and now i opened an electricity tariff and you can see it's a very rich very detailed ui and it has all uh, the fancy stuff that you would expect from a rich desktop application so that's our application the desktop client running like a normal java x application uh, nothing special so far but I mean, the idea is that this software is being used by like a handful of support people at the electricity suppliers company, like on site. So there isn't really a need for a web client. But of course, you know, in the real world, sooner or later, some manager will come and say, I, will, I also need access via the web. OK, um, I really need that. Uh, everybody has web interface. We will only buy your software if it's like web enabled. And then we go like, yeah, sure, it runs on the web too. We just plug in JPro and there it is. Uh, that's the JPro version. And 99% of the code that we are using is absolutely identical to the desktop client. There are only a few exceptions. And that's because, for example, the Google Map UI that you saw, that's using uh, the web view control, but you cannot run a web view inside a browser because then you have a browser in a browser and that violates all kinds of uh, security constraints. Okay, so that's just not allowed. But what you can do then is there's this, this view in JPro called HTML view. And so instead of opening the GMAPS view with the map, I just create a container that shows arbitrary HTML. And that HTML is actually some JavaScript uh, in the end that uh, loads the Google map. So when I'm running the Google map inside the browser, that Google map version is actually more, uh, has more features than the one running in JavaFX on the desktop because it, like the street view stuff that only works in the browser. So sometimes you can even have more features in your JavaFX application when it runs in the browser, which is kind of cool. <laughs> All right, so that's the application. Um, there was, again, this is, I'm basically doing the same run through the application. So I'm back in the product management section. I'm selecting the, the same tariff and you'll see the same richness, the same details, the same navigation elements, just like before. All right. Uh, do show a little bit more, like the photo view control that I recently created. There are a few more navigation elements in here. There's a dialogue framework that, that, that was put in there. Okay, so that's the web version of our application. And like I said, uh, the Shell FX stuff, um, you can think of it like a rich client platform. It's not completely productized yet. But if you're interested and you want to get a jump start, then please come and contact me and we can figure something out. Our startup always needs money, just like any startup. So if I can license this to you, that would help. Yeah, and that's it. How am I doing at the time, Henry? I think you're doing great. Is it two minutes? Let me dive. Yeah, so so actually, I don't know if there are questions. Let me see, because there was a lot of discussion about Java on mobile um, and how Java on mobile is even possible and what's going on here and so on and so on. So so sadly, we have not prepared something, but but Dirk, we should check if we can maybe do a, a Java on mobile five minute sample, hello world for tomorrow or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are curious how, how this is working. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. we have the Gruan guys, right? We have the Gruan guys tomorrow, so they will talk. Yeah, about yeah. I always ask Johan. So, uh, for the keynote, it is planned to only have screenshots, but we should discuss that. If I mean, we have 
some some breaks tomorrow we have have the panel so maybe this is possible we, we, i think we should be flexible here because yeah. the audience is asking a lot about that and another thing um, that the audience asked is about your application um, and they ask if if you use custom windows decorations here or what kind of operation system is this yeah, like so I'm, I'm, from the left and yeah i'm using uh, a stage uh, an undecorated uh, stage and that just gives you a rectangle window without any uh, window handles or title bar or anything like that and then you can use the, the, the whole space. So I just added a panel that looks like a title that has mm. elements at the top that allow you to close or minimize or maximize the window. So you can take full control all over the window if you want to. And, yeah. and um, I think if somebody is interesting, how, how this is done, we did it in the um, um, uh, Extreme GUI makeover on the was it last year or two years ago? Two years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, two years ago at, at Java FX days, Dirk and I did a, a session which was recorded that you can find on the JFX days yeah. homepage um, about the Extreme Google Makeover. And there we show how you can create such Windows designs on your own. And if you don't believe the mobile stuff, can you see this? No, the... <laughs> All right, so it's there. Uh, so it's really okay. running here, okay? <laughs> is this for free on, on the App Store? So no, it's, I... not, it's not on the App Store yet. Uh, okay. we, are, we haven't gone to market yet. All right. yeah. okay. we, are so it... like we are a struggling startup, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we ask, <laughs> we yeah. ask uh, Johan maybe to show a short example uh, tomorrow where I have yeah. an advice about Gluon Mobile with Java FX. Uh, maybe in screenshot from the DevOps app, uh, what you mentioned, and Hendrik. There are apps DevOps. on the App Store already, right? Yeah, yeah, I know the DevOps application for the DevOps yeah. conference. The app. Yeah, and, and this 2024. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've already seen two applications today, right? In yeah. the FXGL uh, talk, we've seen two games that are based on JavaFX that are running on mobile. Yeah. Mini Golf app. Oh, Paul and Jay Anderson did a mini golf app. I didn't know that one. I yeah. saw that one. So there's a mini golf app too. Um, so.